Hey there! In another video I showed you how to create some basic labels from Microsoft Access. You can create them from any data set, whether it's a query or a table. In this video I want to show you how to create some specialty labels. And in this case I'm using the Dymo Label Writer 450. This is a printer that prints out thermal labels. It doesn't need ink, it just uses a thermal printer to print one label at a time so you don't have to use an entire sheet. And it's ideal for things like shipping labels and other types of specialty labels. The process for actually creating labels can be a little bit different than your standard sheet-fed labels. So in this video I want to show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and do this from the books table. We have a table of books and let's say that at our small little lending library at the Collier Public Library they want to create labels for the inside of the front covers. Something that will hold say the title, number of pages, the author, and maybe a barcode showing the asset tag. For that we could use something like the Dymo label printer to print them off one or two at a time is needed. In this case I'm going to create a very specialized query. I'm just going to pull up one or two of the books. I don't want to print a bunch of labels all at once. Let's go ahead and start off with Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new query and I'll say Create Query Design. Now if you were doing this as part of a regular program you'd probably have a form that would actually show you the book's information and you could have a command button that would just print out the label on demand. But for this example I'm going to use a query. So I'm going to select the authors table and the books table and click close. Let's expand these and I'm going to select book title from the books table, number of pages, published year, publisher, and then from the authors table I'm going to select last name and first name. And then let's take a look at that query. So we have all the books showing here along with the information that I requested. So what I'm going to do is go back to the design view and I'm going to type in great expectations in quotes to limit that query to just the two records that I want. So let's go ahead and view it again. So we're seeing that we have two copies of Great Expectations by Charles Dickens and it's showing the page numbers and I just realized that I also need the asset tag from the books table. So let's go ahead and double click that to add that. So now we have the asset tag and the author and the publisher and the other information that we need. So let's go to the reports creator and I'm going to click on create and labels. That's under the reports section of the create menu and it's saying that I need to save the query so I'm going to go ahead and save it. Click OK. Now again we come to the label wizard and in this case I'm going to click continuous under label type and I don't have a manufacturer for these labels. I'm actually using 2 and 5 16 inches by 4 inches shipping labels. So I'm going to come down here and click customize and I'm going to click new and I'm going to give these labels a name and I'm going to leave it as continuous and I'm going to click on landscape. That's how the printer actually generates these. And down here it's giving us an opportunity to enter the actual measurements of the labels. That's actually the height so I'm going to put in 2 and 5 16 inches and it has to be a decimal and you can figure that out if you don't already know with the calculator. 5 divided by 16 equals 0 0.3125. So I'm going to put 2.3125. And then under the width, the label width, I'm going to put 4 inches. 
And I'm going to leave the rest of these as zero because there's not a lot of space at all on these labels outside of the actual label area. On the other side here, it shows the margins that you can create within the label, but I'm going to leave that for later. It's asking for the number across. There's only one label across for these labels. These settings appear to be as they should be, so I'm going to click OK, and now it's saved that. That's actually saved that to my Access installation, so I can use that whenever I want to. So I'm going to click Close, and it's stored that as a label definition. And then I'm going to click Next. I'm going to leave this as an Arial font that's easy to read. I'm going to change the font size to 10 to make it big enough to read. And then click Next. And now it's giving us the prototype label where we can set up the arrangement of the data on the label itself. So I'm going to double click book title and I'm going to press enter to go to the next line and then I have to decide how the rest of this is going to be displayed. I think I'll put the author's name next on the next line. Last name comma first. Then I'll go to the next line and then I'll put publisher and the published year and then on the next line, I think I'll put the number of pages and just type in pages so that it prints out each time. I'll put the asset tag down here. So now I have all the information that I want on the label. I'll go ahead and click Next. I think I want to sort this by asset tag since there's going to be two and it's limited to a specific book, so I'll sort that by asset tag just to have something that it's sorted by. Click Next, and let's see how these look printed. Click Finish. Okay, so that's not exactly the way that I need it right now. In order to get that, what I have to do is play around with the printer settings, because right now it's sending it to the default printer on my system. So let's go ahead and go to Design View, just right click and select Design View, and it's showing the correct size. It's set to 4 inches by 2 and 5 16 inches for the detail, but we need to look at the page setup, and I'll click on Page Setup up here under the Report Design Tools, and it's already set at landscape, which is good. And then I'll go to page setup. And first, I'm going to go to the page settings, the page tab here under page setup. And I'm going to select a specific printer. Now to do this, you need to have the Dymo printer installed on your system so that it can access the printer and its settings. So I'm going to click printer and I'm going to select the Dymo Label Writer 450, click OK, and then as soon as you select that printer, it's going to make all these paper sizes available. These are all the different types of labels that can be printed through the Dymo Label Writer. So now that we have that, we can select a label that's more or less what we need. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to select the 99014 shipping label, which is approximately the size of the label that I'm using. It doesn't necessarily have to be exactly the same. And I'm going to click OK. And then let's take a look at the print preview. So now it's actually showing us a single label within the print preview and it looks pretty good it, it needs some tweaking on the the format but right now it looks pretty decent so let's go to design view again let's change some of these fields that it's put in here first I'm going to expand the margin a little bit just temporarily so that I can work with it and shrink that a little bit, reestablish that margin at four inches, and move that over a little bit. 
and I think I want the book title in bold so I'm going to select it and do a control B that will set it to bold and I think I will change that font to 12 point so the book title is a little bit bigger and I'll right click on that and say size to fit so that will expand the height just a little bit then I'm going to select all of these and move the left side over just a little bit I'm going to click on design and I'm going to use label control to add some labels to these okay so I've added those and let's go ahead and align those a bit right click and align to right and let's take a look at the print preview and that looks pretty decent now I said earlier that you could show the asset number as a barcode let's say that you wanted to design the system so that you could just scan this label and that it would pull up the asset tag and search the database by that value let's see how we would do that let's close print preview and let's expand this a little bit I'm going to add another instance of that asset tag to the label and in this case let's go ahead and look at the print preview again so you can see where it's showing there right at the bottom of the label and something to be careful of is the actual margins of the label I said earlier that I was going to leave the margins for last let's go ahead and take a look at those right now if we go back to page setup and again page setup and if we look at the margins we can see that it's automatically set them and just so that I have them set to the minimum I'm going to enter zero for each one okay so that's actually reduced a couple of the margins it's specified the absolute minimum that it's able to print to so let's click OK and let's do a print preview and as you can see it's centered that pretty well and we actually have a bit less space to work with because if I move this down here and do another print preview it's not going to show up it's outside the margins and you can see where it's actually printing too many labels so I'm going to move this back up here and let's see what it does now print preview it's still showing eight pages I only want two labels and it's it's showing that it's actually printing eight labels and that's going to result in a lot of blank labels being printed so we can't have that so let's see what happens if we take all of this and move this back up then change this so that the detail is only about two inches high let's actually put that right at two inches and let's see what happens now print preview two three okay now it's down to four what it's what that means is that it's still finding information that can't be printed exactly on those two labels it's not actually showing anything on the blank labels it's just showing that the detail is too big for the labels that it's been told to use so let's go back to design view and let's move this margin over a little bit and let's move this and let's go back to print preview it's still not liking that so let's let's take a look at the label itself we're not using all the information so let's go ahead and design view let's shrink this a bit more right now we're just playing around with the two dimensions let's shrink that down to about three and three quarters inches and now we're down to two so that's so now it's happy it's just printing those two labels 
and that seems to work. Now again, let's go back to the second asset tag. I want that to show up as a barcode. And what I've done, I've actually installed a free barcode font on my system. So what I'm going to do is go back to Design View, and I'm going to select that second asset tag, and I come over here to Format, and then I'm going to select that font, Free 3 of 9, and change that to the actual font name. Free 3 of 9 is the actual font that I'm using. And let's increase the font size a bit. And let's move that around a little bit. And let's see what that looks like. Go to Print Preview. OK. So it's actually showing up as a barcode. And you should actually be able to scan that once you print it out and have the system pull it up. If you don't have a barcode scanner, that's OK. This is just a quick demonstration. It's, it's something that you would probably have to play around with. I've actually printed out barcode labels and it works pretty well, uh, including from the thermal printer for the label writer. So it's something handy to play around with if you actually do get a hold of a barcode scanner. They're pretty inexpensive. So let's go ahead and close that. And I'd like to save a little bit more space, so I'm going to move this over here. So that doesn't look too bad. That's actually a neat little label that, that you could print out and put on the inside of a front or a back cover as, as is appropriate. Now, let's take a look at how those print out. So I'm going to just go ahead and print this out now. Let's go ahead and print, and it's going to the Dymo Label Writer 450, and let's see what this does. Okay, so what that's done is actually printed out the two labels. You can see where the Label Writer itself has handled the form feed with no problem at all. And you can see it's even printed out the barcode. Barcode probably needs to be a bit bigger, so that will have to be adjusted. But otherwise, the text is clear, and it looks pretty good. And we can actually tear those off and use those anywhere you want. So that came out pretty well. And that's pretty much how you print from the Dymo label writer from Access, it took a little bit more work, a little bit more tweaking of the settings, but if you're working with a label writer, you'll find that it's worth it so that you don't have to print out entire sheets of labels all at once. It's also another really good demonstration of Microsoft Access's reporting and presentation capabilities.